Any of our outings, if you want them in the calendar, get them to me so I can get them in. So uh, please make sure that I get those. I have to tell you about an, uh, what I would call an epiphany. I was working at the house last week. First of all, you'll notice I've got notes um, for two reasons. One, um, I just didn't have enough rehearsal time to really get this thing together. And number two, I just don't want to leave anybody out. But anyway, I had this epiphany last week, and I just felt that a need to, to share with everyone. I wanted to start a tradition at uh, what I'll call Bill's Oktoberfest. And every, uh, every year, I would like to do what I'm going to affectionately call Rick's Family Roast. Now, what this is going to entail is going to be information from you to me about someone that you love. But you just found something interesting that you thought this might be a good place to share. And I would be more than honored to bring that to the attention of the family. It'll remain strictly anonymous. So, starting today, uh, anything that you think might be funny, crazy, silly, but most importantly embarrassing, you're going to email that to me, and next year, we're going to talk. Because you got to understand, if we don't learn to laugh at ourselves, we might at least learn to laugh at each other. Right? But tonight is about family. And I'm going to start with Linda. Now, Linda, she's... The, the one member of this family that always saw the glass as half full. Always. And then she'd run to the bar and fill it up. <laughs> I still remember those days when I'd come home from college and, and Linda would be there and she would seem so excited that I was home. And then when I'd get back to school and go through my duffel bag, I realized half of my clothes were missing. It wasn't me she wanted to see, it was my t-shirts. And they were all, I think she still has them. But Linda has many gifts. I've seen Linda take a handful of dead flowers and a couple of feet of beautiful ribbon and a lovely vase. And in about 30 minutes, you got a vase full of dead flowers. Amen. I'm sorry. But I'll tell you on a serious note, I can guarantee that mom right now is looking down on us. And she's got her arm around Lori Jane. And she's looking at us and saying, there's no way we could handle two of them. Yeah. <laughs> now Rob. Poor Robert Stanford. I can still hear mom saying, poor Robert Stanford. And that was at her, that was at his college graduation. <laughs> but really, Rob, Rob is a lot smarter than he looks. I mean, seriously, he is a lot smarter than he looks. Yeah. But you know, I, I was a music major in college, and and you know, Rob being the youngest brother, and I just always dreamed that maybe one day he'd pick up a musical instrument. But no, he's a drummer. And I know you probably want me to tell one of those drummer jokes. You don't want me to tell. Okay, just one. I need a bottle of water. Water. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. What are they? Uh, what do you call a drummer with a good sense of rhythm? Rare. All right, one more. What do you buy a drummer with a good sense of rhythm? The guitar. All right, one more. What do you What do you call a drummer whose girlfriend just left him? Homeless.
But we are thankful that Rob bought the house. Because when he first came up with this idea, you know, he talked to all of us, talked about the investment, talked about how important uh, owning property would be and how it was going to benefit all of us. And, and let's take a look at the housing market since that day. I've thought about that more than once. Oh, God. Absolutely. And now, Bill. First of all, I think we need to give a big round of applause to the person that made this thing possible tonight, right? That's right. Thanks, Barb. I'm going to tell you, Barb was probably the second most important thing that's happened to Bill in his life, besides soap and water. For some of you that didn't know, when Bill grew up, he, he was just like a magnet. I'm not sure it was his fault, but he was just always dirty. He was the only kid on our block that the tub would put a ring around him. It was bad. And we know Bill's had some bad luck holding down some jobs. I think the last two companies you've worked for have moved out of the state. I'm sure it's just coincidence. But I am proud of Bill because he's decided to go into education. Going to be a teacher. Congratulations. Yeah, I figured they can't move the whole school to Texas. <laughs> but he, Bill does have many talents, and, and especially vocational, whether it be electrical, small engines, drafting. But I must say I was a bit confused because he's recently uh, inquired... Uh, for a job at our high school in uh, Woodshop. And Bill can make almost anything, I'm telling you. But Bill, when you go into that next interview, you might want to put that right hand in your pocket just to be on the safe side. Love you, brother. Maybe I won't be doing this next year. <laughs> and now Tom. Tom was the one brother that I worried about most. You never knew what he was thinking, but it usually involved the stairway. <laughs> I still got a bump on my head. It was an accident. I didn't see the stairway coming or whatever. And I know I'm the only one that's got guts enough to ask this today, but what's with the H? I get a Christmas card and it says, from T-H-O-M. Isn't that thumb? I mean, if the H is silent, then don't use it. Is it B-H-A-R-R-I-C-K? Where else should we put this H? I don't know. I just, I was a little confused. But I can remember when Tom first moved to Florida. You guys remember. Oh, yeah. And all we heard about was, oh, how warm it is and how pretty it is and how great it is. And you guys ought to come down and you ought to move here and live here. And how you can live in that Indiana weather. da 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 and then he met Kathy. And suddenly, Indiana weather's not so bad. He thinks he might get a trailer up here. He's, he's thinking about buying a house in Michigan. Frickin' Michigan. The home of the 30-foot snowdrift. What? Thanks, Kathy. We needed you. Unbelievable. And now Jimbo. One, two, three, four, five, six family members know, but some of you may not. Jimbo was famous for one thing when he was younger, and that was his feet. I mean, that, that smell was so bad, it would get to the room before he did. You guys know what I mean. I mean, it'd make you cry. It'd make you cry. But you know what? I think that explains why Daddy really took a liking to plumbing. Because I think every time Jim came in, he says, I think we got a toilet backed up somewhere. <laughs> Although sometimes we did, but you just couldn't tell. But, you know, Jimbo, he's always a wealth of information, and he, he knows something about everything. I mean, he can, even, he can even pick a doctor that'll tell you, keep smoking. <laughs> I mean, they're out there. That's right. You know. And then there was the flood. <laughs> And unfortunately, the water came in, and Jim and George's trailer was ruined, and the 
floor and furniture. But remarkably, Jimbo was told to put kitty litter around all of the walls to absorb the moisture. And a lot of the trailers had to re replace drywall all the way up. But no, kitty litter. It worked. Amen. Also, I have some good news. The uh, Guinness Book of World Records is considering calling that trailer the world's largest cat box. <laughs> and then there's Pam. Three words. Queen, matriarch, rock. She's the rock. Pam's been through a lot. But she's never faced a problem that she could not handle with the right medication. <clears throat> and I remember Pam, you know, she had it tough. I mean, you know, there she was trying to raise three kids and working, you know, single mom, trying to get everything done. And gee whiz. And then when you just didn't think it could get any worse, she met Kenny. <laughs> No, wait, that came out wrong. I'll reword that. I'm sorry. That, that. But, you know, we love Pam. God love her. I mean, you hear people say, you know, I, I left until I almost peed my pants. <laughs> With Pam, there's no almost. <laughs> no, no. No, she gets up and there's a wet spot it didn't do. But I'll tell you, one, one of the fondest memories I have, um, and I know... Pam remembers this. Uh, I used to work with the marching band, and, and I had gotten a job in administration, and so I was on the state fair track for that last show. And as I came off that track, I just I was overwhelmed with emotion, and and I knew where they were sitting, and I looked up, and I just blew Mama kiss, and and you know, just it was it was a proud moment. And I can still remember hearing Pam over that din of screaming and yelling, telling everybody. And I changed his diaper. <laughs> Don't think I didn't hear that for the next 20 years. Well, I mentioned earlier this, this epiphany came to me uh, working at, at mom and dad's house. And, uh, you know, mowing grass over there, especially when gas was 350 an hour or 350 uh, a, a gallon, it, you know, it get, gets pretty expensive. Just FYI to the homeowner. Um, but I'll tell you, all the time that I was over there working and picking up sticks, mowing, whatever, I, I still always had that vision of, of mom and dad, and mom was standing there and putting her hand on dad's shoulder and looking down and just whispering softly, where's Bill? <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Let's get the band up here.